This is part 57 of Blazor tutorial. In our previous video, we discussed how to use authorize attribute to authorize access to routable components, that is, components with at page directive. We did this by using the authorize attribute in the component HTML. In this video, we'll discuss how to obtain authentication and authorization state data in the component code instead of the component HTML. At the moment, we are looking at employee list component and notice in the component HTML, we are using the authorize attribute to protect this component. So to get to this component, we must first log in. But if we take a look at edit employee component, notice we're not using the authorize attribute. And here is the path to get to this component slash edit employee slash the ID of the employee. So if we navigate to that path, we are able to access the component. Now we want to protect this component, but let's do that in the component code instead of the HTML. Here is the component code behind file. And the first thing that we are going to do here is include a property of type task of authentication state. And let's call the property authentication state task. We need to bring in the required namespace. This is a cascading parameter. So let's decorate it with cascading parameter attribute. And then in the component lifecycle method on initialized async, let's await the execution of this authentication state task. We can now use this variable authentication state to obtain authentication and authorization data. We want to check if the user is authenticated. So notice on this variable authentication state, we have user property. And from the IntelliSense, you can see it is the user's claims principle. And on this, we have identity and we can check if the user is authenticated. If the user is not authenticated, we want to redirect the user to ASP.NET Core identity login page. And remember, the path to get to the identity login page is slash identity slash account slash login. And to navigate to the login page, we use navigation manager and the navigation manager service is already injected into this component. So let's use navigation manager dot navigate to the login page. Notice now when we reload this page and try to get to this edit employee component, we are redirected to the login page because we are not logged in yet. Let's log in. We are logged in and we are able to access edit employee component. Let's log out. And now if we try to access edit employee component again, we are redirected back to the login page as expected. Now what we want to do is in the URL when we are redirecting the user to the login page, we also want to include the page the user was trying to access as the return URL. So when the user actually logs in, we can redirect him back to the page that he is trying to access. This is a pretty handy feature that most applications have today. Just before we navigate to the login page, let's create a variable of type string return URL and the path to get to edit employee component is slash edit employee slash the ID of the employee. Notice we already have the employee ID parameter. Let's use that here. It's always a good practice to encode URLs. For that, let's use web utility class. This class is in system.net namespace. Let's bring that in. And in this class, we have URL encode method. As the name implies, this method encodes the URL. All that is left to do is pass this variable as the return URL to the login page. We're going to do that by using a query string parameter. So question mark and let's name the query string parameter return URL equals the value we have in the variable return URL. Now, if we take a look at the ASP.NET Core identity login page, Notice a parameter with name return URL is passed and on a successful login, we are redirecting the user to that return URL. With all these changes in place, let's take a look at the browser. We are not logged in and if we try to access edit employee component, notice we are redirected 
to the login page and in the URL, we also have return URL. Now, when we log in, we are redirected to the edit employee component as expected. Cascading authentication state parameter can also be used to check if the authenticated user is in a specific role. In this example, we are checking if the user is in the administrator role. It's also possible to check if the authenticated user satisfies a specific authorization policy. For that, along with the authentication state cascading parameter, we use ASP.NET Core authorization service. This service is in Microsoft ASP.NET Core authorization namespace. On this service, we have authorize async method. As you can see in this example, we are using it to check if the user satisfies admin policy. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss rules, claims, and policy-based authorization. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.